What's good with you, YouTube? It is the Cali Effect, King of Games, and today we're gonna be watching a live duel between Cyber Dragon and Thunder Dragon. Now, I know you guys see that little graphic. We are working on the quality of life, quality of life aesthetics for our live duels. And if you guys do know a little bit more about Sony Vegas or whatever, just about video editing in general, go ahead and message me. Uh, my links are down below in the description, Instagram, Facebook, it does not matter, Discord. I'm definitely looking for some more insight to make this a lot better for the viewers. So starting off with TJ, he's gonna be going first. He's gonna activate Thunder Dragon. And in normal, pure Thunder Dragon variants, uh, a lot of players wanna activate one Thunder Dragon to add another Thunder Dragon, and then activate that second Thunder Dragon to add a third, because it puts two Thunder Dragons in your graveyard so you can activate and resolve your Thunder Dragon fusion. In this particular variant, TJ is actually activating one, adding two cards to his hand, and because he plays Danger Monsters, just activating Thunder Dragons to get more Thunder Dragons in his hand allows him to resolve those other Thunder, or two, hopefully be able to resolve those danger monsters a little easier by giving him more targets in his hand. He's then gonna banish that Thunder Dragon to Special Summon Black Dragon Caleb Servant and then Normal Summon Phantom Sky Blaster giving him two more tokens, immediately using those tokens for a Link Summon. That's going to net him a Reproticus. Now Reproticus is gonna turn the Phantom Sky Blaster into a Dinosaur Monster, using both of those monsters for another Link Summon into Summon Sorceress. Summon Sorceress targeting Black Dragon Calyp Surfing is gonna allow him to spell summon a Dragon Monster to his zone where Summon Sorceress points to. He's obviously gonna spell summon the Eclipse Wyvern to his side of the field where Summon Sorceress points to. And looking at it, TJ must have a Danger Monster in his hand because he could have used the Phantom Sky Blaster token to turn into a Link Spider and then make Saryu just Skull Dread. But no, he's gonna activate that Danger Sunoko guaranteed to summon itself to his side of the field, which is probably the reason why he went through that combo sequence. Unfortunately for him, I'm not going to hit a Thunder Dragon Monster. I'm gonna hit Danger Sunoko. He's gonna go ahead and special summon it to his side of the field anyways because it is a guaranteed summon. Using all four of his monsters, he's going to Link Summon it to Saryu just Skull Dread and now you can only imagine that he's trying to get into that Battery Man Solar. He already has the White Dragon Wyvern Buster, so you're just gonna allow him to draw four cards from his deck to his hand, and uh, Black Dragon Caleb Serpent is gonna be Chain Link 3. So looking at the Chain Link order, Black Dragon Caleb Serpent is Chain Link 3, so you just Chain Link 2, and Eclipse Wyvern is Chain Link 1, because Eclipse Wyvern is mandatory, and mandatory effects always have to be Chain Link 1. So he's gonna add that White Dragon Wyvern Buster to his hand before resolving that Saryuja, drawing four cards and then placing three to the bottom of his deck. We can only imagine that one of them is at least one of those Thunder Dragon monsters because now he has a little bit more wiggle room to use that Thunder Dragon monster to get that other Thunder Dragon monster and still be able to play some insane Yu-Gi-Oh. TJ is playing this da Danger Thunder Dragon deck out of his mind right now, but he hasn't gotten the most optimal hand. He's trying to get the most optimal hand right here and right now. Looking at our options right now, since we already did use Black Dragon Callop Serpent's effect, um, if we drew Battery Man Solar, we would special summon it, send the Thunder Dragon Roar, special summon the the White Dragon Wyvern Buster by banishing the Roar, Roar can special summon Thunder Dragon Dark, which uh, in turn we would have four more monsters for another Link Summon. Depending on the rest of our hand sequence, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get the Eclipse Wyvern banished because we had to use it in our beginning turn so it's interesting to see what TJ is going to do going forward. He's definitely playing safe, but he also wants to play smart. He's going to use his last Thunder Dragon or his second Thunder Dragon to add his last Thunder Dragon, which we can only assume or we actually already know that he's used that Thunder Dragon to be placed on the bottom of his deck to Saryuja Skull Dread. He's then going to use Saryuja Skull Dread to spell summon his last Thunder Dragon. And now banish the Black Dragon for the White Dragon. So yes, he wasn't able to put a Thunder Dragon Dark into his graveyard, but that's okay, ladies and gentlemen. He's gonna use that for a Link Summon into Guard Dragon LP. LP allows him to spell summon a Dragon Monster from his deck to his side of the field, but not before he resolves his uh, White Dragon Wyvern Buster to add Black Dragon Callop Serpent, another free card in his hand. He's gonna spell summon that Darkness Diablos Lord of Lair, and I know you guys are like Cali Effect. Why is he playing Darkness Diablos? Well, if you guys are new to the Thunder Dragon Danger concept, I'll explain it a little later. It'll come up, I promise you. He's gonna use four monsters with different names to make Saryuja Skull Dread yet again, drawing four more cards, and he still has that extra bump in his cards, like just an additional card to Black Dragon that he can place to the bottom of his deck for free. He's gonna then use Saryuja Skull Dread to special summon Thunder Dragon Dark, tributing it for the special summon of Thunder Dragon Colossus. And now he's gonna banish three light monsters, two of them Thunder Dragon, one Eclipse Wyvern, 
to special summon from his hand to his side of the field, we can only assume that he's drawn this off of a Saryuja, Chaos Dragon Leviathan. Now, Chaos Dragon Leviathan's effect is going to activate, but so is Eclipse Wyvern. Wyvern's going to allow him to add the uh, Chaos Dragon Le Leviathan that he banished through Wyvern's effect, and then the uh, the Leviathan is going to allow him to special summon a Thunder Dragon Dark back to his side of the field. He's going to then use that Thunder Dragon Dark for another summon into his Thunder Dragon Colossus. And then he's going to trigger the effect of his Darkness Diablos Laura Layer. Since a Dark Monster was tributed, he can spell summon Diablos to his side of the field. Using both of those monsters for an Exceed summon, he's going to go ahead and make number 22 Zombie Stein and pass his turn. With a bad hand, quote unquote, TJ has managed to make a pretty good board to negate two Thunder Dragon Colossus. I can't search any cards, really can't get over those Thunder Dragon Colossuses, but I just so happen to have a pretty decent hand. I'm going to use Dino Wrestler Parker Traps to immediately get rid of the number 22 Zombie Stein, and now I can play Yu Gi Oh! a little bit easier. Using our proxy for Cyber Dragon Nashter, <laughs> just, just think that as a proxy, guys. That Ultimate Rare is not what it is, it's a Cyber Dragon Nashter. It's going to discard Cyber Dragon to Spell Summon itself. And since I have a 2100 monster in the graveyard, I'm going to go ahead and Spell Summon it through Nashter. I'm now going to follow up Machine Duke to Spell Summon two more copies of Cyber Dragon from my deck to my side of the field. And we are on a roll. Four monsters on my side of the field. Keep in mind, I can only summon the machine monsters for the rest of the turn due to Cyber Dragon Nashter's effects. But Dual Power has definitely taken Cyber Dragon to the next level just off of one card. Not only did I have a monster that can bring another Cyber Dragon monster to my side of the field, it's also a machine dupe target. You can't ask for more. You really can't inside of this card. It is just insane. It's sexy. It's powerful. It does everything you need to help boost the deck. Now, only if it didn't have that clause, making boards would be so much easier. Using the Nashter and the Cyber Dragon for a Link Summon, we're going to go ahead and make Cyber Dragon Siger to my side of the field. Now, I'm going to use both Cyber Dragon monsters for an Exceed Summon, trying to figure out if I should do it right now. We actually took a little bit longer, so I kind of cut it up. I'm going to be, you, you're going to see a couple of skips, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to either be A, one of us made a mistake that we wanted to backtrack. Giving you guys the best quality videos is in my interest. Or B, it just took too long. So we're going to use both of those monsters for an XC summon to our Cyber Dragon Nova. Detaching the Cyber Dragon. And since I do have a Cyber Dragon monster in my graveyard, I can spell summon said Cyber Dragon from my graveyard. And now we're going to make Cyber Dragon Infinity. Using Infinity to absorb the first Thunder Dragon Colossus. We are close to breaking this board. Now, TJ does have a last copy of Thunder Dragon Colossus, which is a little harder to get over until we summon a Kaiju to where that monster points to, ladies and gentlemen. That is crazy. Now, that Kaiju monster isn't necessarily supposed to be where Saryuja is pointing to, but I'm pretty sure you guys can forgive that. It's not really going to matter because I'm going to activate Overload Fusion, banishing two Cyber Dragon monsters, two Special Summon Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon to my side of the field. Rampage is going to go ahead and use its ability. I'm going to be able to send the Cyber Dragon monsters from my deck to my graveyard to, so it can gain additional attacks. I'm going to send hers in Cyber Dragon Core. And since hers is a, since hers activates when it sends to the graveyard, Cyber Dragon Core is a Cyber Dragon monster. I can go ahead and add that Cyber Dragon hers from my deck to my hand. We are on the next level of breaking TJ's board. This is insane. Cyber Dragons haven't even used their normal summon and we're late in the combo sequence. I'm going to go ahead and use that normal summon right now. Hers is going to recur that Cyber Dragon Core from my graveyard to my hand. And now, I'm going to go ahead and normal summon that Cyber Dragon Core and then gain its effect to allow me to search a Cyber Speller Trap card from my deck to my hand. And I know what you guys are thinking. Cali Effect, you have enough damage to break his board, but do you have enough for game? Well, with Cyber Load Fusion, I'm pretty sure I do. We can use the Cyber Dragon Saiger to pump up the Rampage Dragon, which can attack twice, attacking over both the Saryuja Skull Dread and the, uh, the Kaiju. And now we have enough to set the table for game using both the Infinity, the Cyber Dragon. That's 40, that's 4,000 damage. You guys can already chalk that up. I don't need to inflict damage to his monsters. I just needed to get over them, which Chimera Tech is 4,200. It's allowed to get over it. And those other monsters, they can inflict a good amount of damage. But even more importantly, I have that Cyber Load Fusion fusing my Cyber Dragon and my Cyber Dragon Seeger for a fusion summon. That's going to go ahead and make my Cyber Twin Dragon, which can attack twice. We're going to pick up sticks, ladies and gentlemen. That is game. Cyber Dragon already able to be able to break a insane board with the new Cyber Dragon Natcher. It was really awesome to see how they played. Now, 
TJ's actually going to draw a really good hand this time around. Let's see if we can break it. He's going to go ahead and use Thunder Dragon in his hand. All these plays start with Thunder Dragon. I'm kind of jelly. And that Thunder Dragon is going to get him two more Thunder Dragons. It's very smart that he did it this way. Because the next card that he's going to activate, if he would have drawn the Thunder Dragon or if he would have obtained the Thunder Dragon in a different way, then it would have been pretty bad to have just two Thunder Dragons in your hand and one in your deck. Uh, I mean, you, you want to get that advantage, not just draw into the cards that you want to search. So he's going to go ahead and activate Sekka's Light, which is, gives him good reasoning. That, that's a good reason to activate Thunder Dragon before you activate Sekka's Light. He's going to draw two more cards from his deck to his hand. We can only assume that he has everything he needs, but just in case, it looks like he's going to think about using that Sekka's Light in his graveyard. No, he's going to set a card face down. Huh. So that's weird. He's going to set a card face down, and then he's going to use Sekka's Light. Interesting. He's going to put that Thunder Dragon back into his deck. Maybe, well, that almost confirms that he has a Danger Monster in his hand, no? But then it's like, what face down cards does Danger Thunder Dragon have? This don't make no sense. This has to be another Sekka of Light face down, meaning that it's completely useless, and he's trying to prepare for his Danger Monster effects. It's also really important, ladies and gentlemen, that you give your opponent as least amount of information as possible before activating Monster Effects. I wouldn't say that uh, TJ setting that card face down changes anything, but I do think that you should activate your Sekka's Light before you give them any indication of if you have any inf information. No, it doesn't really change anything sometimes, but sometimes it can, and you don't want to leave anything to risk. So TJ is going to draw his card off of Sekka's Light, and then he's going to go ahead and normal summon his Ballery Man Solar. Solar is going to send a Thunder Monster from his deck to his graveyard, and he just might have the combo through all of those cards that he just drew. He's going to banish the Thunder Dragon Roar to special summon his White Dragon Wyvern Buster, and yes, he does have the combo. Thunder Dragon Roar is going to use its effect. He's going to special summon Thunder Dragon Dark to his side of the field. Because a Thunder Monster was special summoned, he can use Battery Man Solar's effect. That's going to special summon a token to his side of the field. Using both the token and the Thunder Dragon Dark, he is going to Link Summon into the Reproductus. Now, Reproductus is going to target the Battery Man Solar and turn it into a dinosaur. TJ is in a pretty good spot. Now that Battery Man Solar is a dinosaur, he can use both those monsters for a Link Summon into a Summon Sorceress. Summon Sorceress targeting the Wyvern Buster can spell summon the Eclipse Wyvern from his deck to his side of the field. Now, the Eclipse Wyvern and the Summon Sorceress used for a Link Summon can now make Saryuja Skull Dread. And while he won't be able to do anything other than give his monsters attacks through Saryuja Skull Dread, it's still important that he has those three arrows pointing face down because now he can extend it to some more combos. Now, granted, Thunder Dragon Dark, uh, oh, that, that's a little late, TJ. He's going to get that Thunder Dragon Hawk from that Thunder Dragon Dark. And uh, he's also going to have to banish for that Eclipse Wyvern since it is mandatory, ladies and gentlemen. That is right. The effect of Thunder Dragon, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, of Eclipse Wyvern is mandatory. So I mean, maybe he's just he was just waiting to get all this to the field so we could do it in all one search. No, that's not the legal way to do it, but... Uh, TJ can be lazy at times, ladies and gentlemen, so please forgive him. I'm pretty sure you guys are understanding. We all make mistakes. He's then going to go ahead and use that White Dragon Calip Serpent or White Dragon Wyvern Buster for Link Summon into Dark Guard Dragon LP. And now we can special summon that Darkness Diablos back to his side of the field, almost using it for its original purposes. We can only assume that he has a Danger Monster, but it almost doesn't matter. He has that Black Dragon Calip Serpent in his hand. He has a Eclipse Wyvern in his graveyard. You'll be able to get Leviathan Air and make Saryuja food if he so pleases right then and there, or just continue to pop off with his combo depending on what he wants to do when the rest is in his hand. He's going to banish that Eclipse Wyvern to spell summon Black Dragon, and then the Darkness Diablos in the Collapse Serpent is going to go ahead and make Argapain. Now, Argapain is going to use its effect, and since LP and Saryuja point to a Link Arrow, he can spell summon that Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss to where the both of those monsters point to. He's then going to use Thunder Dragon to search another Thunder Dragon from his deck to his hand. But keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, right now he's only locked in a special summon Thunder or uh, Dragon Monsters because he has LP and Argapane on his side of the field. We can only assume that he wants to get rid of those monsters right here, right now. Using both Saryuja and LP as Link 1s and Argapane as Link 2s, he's going to spell summon his second copy of Saryuja Skull Dread into a zone where Scarlet Red Ar Dragon Archfiend Abyss doesn't point to. He's then going to use his Thunder Dragon Hawk to spell summon his Thunder Dragon Dark from his deck to his graveyard, or from his graveyard to his side of the field. And now he can use that Thunder Dragon Dark for a Link Summon. Why do I keep saying that? It's not a Link Summon for a Tribute Summon? For a Summon of Thunder Dragon Colossus, because it's not a Fusion Summon either. Now that can trigger his Darkness Diablos Lord of Leia, which he's going to gain that effect right now. 
Lord of Layers is going to special summon itself because he tributed a dark monster. And now he can start popping off with some more combos. So you just go Dread's effect. He's going to go ahead and use that. He's going to special summon a Thunder Dragon to his side of the build and then tribute it off for another copy of Thunder Dragon Colossus. Now he can banish three uh, monsters for from his graveyard to special summon Chaos Dragon Leviathan. We already know he has it because he's banished it for the Eclipse Wyvern and he got it to his hand through the Eclipse Wyvern. So banishing three dark monsters right now would be optimal because I would start off with five cards in my hand against a board like this, which is pretty crazy. Darkness Diablo's Lord of Layer, actually, no, he, he should have, he should have done this better. No, it would have resulted in the same thing. It would have resulted in the exact same thing. I was like, he should have tributed the Darkness Diablos to get rid of a card and then summoned the Leviathan to summon the Lord of, but that, that wouldn't have done anything. It, it would have been the exact same thing. So Leviathan would have shuffled the card into my hand. I guess he should have done it that way because it would have been a little bit safer. He wouldn't have been able to, I wouldn't have been able to Ghost Ogre him if I had it, because if I Ghost Ogre the Leviathan right now, then he, you know, lose his monster. But then I guess I can Ghost Ogre Leviathan no matter, no matter what. Hmm. No, he still should have did it that way. Number 22, Zombie Stein is going to hit the board, and then he's going to pass his turn with two Thunder Dragon Colossus, a Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, and a Zombie Star with a Zo so you just Skull Dread. Um, this is a really, really hard board to break, but can Cyber Dragons break it? It's going to be interesting to see. That was a long break. I'm going to go ahead and special summon Cyber Dragon to my side of the field. Immediately trying to get some distance between me and this monstrosity of what you call a danger Thunder Dragon board. I'm going to use both the Soyuja Skull Dread and the Cyber Dragon for a contact fusion summon into, um, I don't know, it's not Mega, it's not Mega Fleet. It's Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, the OG. He can be used by sending machine monsters to the graveyard. Oh, actually, no, that's, that is the wrong one. I'm supposed to be a Mega Fleet, not a, not a Fortress, because Saryuja isn't a machine. But it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and discard the Hers to spell summon Galaxy Soldier to my side of the field. And now Hers is going to be able to get me Cyber Dragon back into my hand, which I guess is a is a little cheeky. I mean, like, we're still going to have to deal with two Thunder Dragon Colossus, a Zombie Stein, and a Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, which is essentially two negates and I can't search. I'm going to use what's supposed to be the Mega Fleet for a tribute summon into Cyber Dragon, and then those two monsters for an exceed summon i mean I, I can make constellar polites and then bounce the the colossus but I'm, I'm still like i still don't have anything i'm gonna go ahead and detach the cyber dragon the the cyber dragon through cyber dragon over to special summon cyber dragon and tj's all like do you do you have a way to break my board and i'm like Shh, i'm thinking i'm trying I, i'm going in circles pretty much but i'm trying now i can make the infinity but the infinity wouldn't do anything he has two negates on the side of the field um it's just it's a tough it's a tough day for for cyber dragons we're not breaking this board ladies and gentlemen there's not much we can do to this this is uh, way too massive uh maybe if it was just the standard board and we drew the kaiju possibly but um not in this particular situation we're gonna go ahead and scoop it up danger thunder dragon can sometimes make those boards that i mean it's very few decks that can break it cyber dragon is not immune to it i don't want to say that or i don't want to show you guys all fluffy and all greatness of cyber dragon i want to show you guys uh you know, a little bit, sometimes it's not always to break those boards, but the deck is still really, really powerful. This time around, I'm going to get the opportunity to go first, and I'm going to make TJ pay for it, because, I mean, you know, I mean, I get to go first. I'm going to use Cyber Emergency, and that's going to allow me to add one Light Machine Monster, or one Cyber Dragon Monster from my deck to my hand. I'm going to add Cyber Dragon Vi, and I'm going to be able to pop off with a pretty good combo that's going to put me, that's going to set me up really well. Now, for the people that want to see this cyber dragon deck profile and i know you guys want to see this cyber dragon deck profile because it's pretty good I, I love it i think that a lot of people will think that it's a great build and it can help you if not this particular build but maybe give you some insight on how cyber dragon plays or even more importantly give you some tips on what you could be playing inside of your cyber dragon build it on let's try to get this video to 350 likes ladies and gentlemen i know you guys like seeing those meta decks versus those non-meta decks uh it's gonna be really fun to show off how these non-meta decks can compete so thinking about what i can do with my next sequence i'm gonna go ahead and normal summon cyber dragon core making sure that i get the combo to pop off i'm gonna go ahead and chain cyber dragon vi to the cyber dragon core's effect which essentially prevents me from being ash blossom and joy of spring that's why i like cyber dragon vi so much 
I'm going to add Cyber Rev System for my deck to my hand. And it looks like I'm going to have the combo that Cyber Dragon players just love. You open up with this combo, you're in pretty good hands. Now, this combo can be extended by playing a couple of other quote-unquote bricks. But um, it's almost worth it if you decide to play those bricks. I'll show you guys in the combo tutorial. I'm then going to use Machine Duplication on my Cyber Dragon Core. I'm going to spell summon two more Cyber Dragons from my deck to my side of the field. Now, one thing you guys should watch out for is Effect Veiler on Machine Duplication. Because if you were an Effect Veiler Cyber Dragon Core, not a condition for it to be Cyber Dragon. So, it kind of turns back into Cyber Dragon Core, so I'd only be able to summon two more cores. Using both of those monsters for a Link Summon, I'm going to make Cyber Dragon Seeger to my side of the field. And now I'm going to use one of the Cyber Dragons, or I would think I would use one of the Cyber Dragons in the core to make Summon Sorceress. No, it looks like I'm still still debating on what I should be doing with this play. Yes, yes, it, no, it looks like we're going to go ahead and do it. No, no, <laughs> Calific definitely knows how to change his mind. I'm going to go ahead and use the effect of a monster in my hand known as Galaxy Soldier, pitching Cyber Dragon Hers to my graveyard to spell summon itself. And then I can use my Cyber Dragon Hers to recur a Cyber Dragon monster in my graveyard to my hand. So I guess that can be more fodder for Galaxy Soldier. Hers can't add itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and add Cyber Dragon Vi. It doesn't matter which one I'll, I'm going to add. I'm going to discard it again anyways. And now in a pretty good spot. I'm going to go ahead and use the Seeger and the Galaxy Soldier for the Link Summon into Summon Sorceress. Summon Sorceress targeting the Cyber Dragon to be able to spell summon the last Galaxy Soldier from my deck to my side of the field. In any given situation, if you guys come across this particular combo sequence, or if you guys want to spell summon a monster, light machine monster to your side of the field, spell summon Galaxy Soldier. It's the safest bet. It's the best way to do it. Because in this particular situation, Galaxy Soldier at one in your deck doesn't serve you anything. It doesn't do anything for you. I'm then going to rev system the Cyber Dragon Seeker back to my side of the field. And now I can use both the Summon Sorceress and the Galaxy Soldier for a Link Summon. That's going to go ahead and make Nightmare Griffin. Nightmare Griffin is going to be able to allow me to discard one card from my hand to set one card to my side of the field. So in this particular situation, I don't necessarily need Galaxy Soldier. Um, we can go ahead and discard it. We're going to discard the Galaxy Soldier to set the uh cyber emergency now that i think about it i probably should have set the vi but no we're gonna set the, we're gonna set the rev system back to our side of the field just in case he makes that thunder dragon colossus normally i would set the rev the 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 cyber emergency but if he makes thunder dragon colossus then you know the emergency is moot i'm gonna make the cyber dragon nova detach the material from cyber dragon and then i'm gonna special summon cyber dragon back to my side of the field as you guys can see i did have enough to extend even more but uh, this deck, this particular build didn't have the extensions. Also, I special summoned Cyber Dragon Hers to my side of the build thinking I'd be able to make a Link Kribo. Plot twist, I didn't play Link Kribo at this certain time. So I'm going to make the Cyber Dragon Infinity. And then I'm going to set a card face down and pass my turn right back to TJ and his Thunder Dragons. Let's see if he can break this board. He's going to activate Sekka's Light and I'm forced to negate the Sekka's Light with Cyber Dragon Infinity. Then he's going to use the Cyber Sekka's Light Graveyard Effect along him to shuffle a Thunder Dragon back into his deck to draw a card looks like tk may just have bricked you know drawing multiple thunder dragons this time around i don't i don't know i wouldn't definitely yeah he he had to have bricked to have drawn thunder dragon or to have used seconds light before using thunder dragon and then to have you know basically seconds light right into the thunder dragon no doubt on my mind that he bricked he's going to use that thunder dragon in his hand recur probably two more thunder dragons to activate his danger monsters effects so yeah, I guess opening Thunder Dragon isn't always good if you open two of them. <laughs> and now he's going to be able to start off with some cool combos. He's going to go ahead and normal summon that Battery Man Solar. He's going to use Battery Man Solar's effect. That's going to send him a Thunder Dragon Roar. Whoa, did he draw the combo yet again? TJ, you're such a savage if you drew that combo. He's going to send Thunder Dragon Roar. But before he can start banishing to summoning those cards, I'm like, hold on, young man, I got a response. The card that I drew off of the Nightmare Griffin was the Cold by the Grave. So lucky me. I'm not going to have to deal with this hip-hop shenanigans that he has going around. We're going to stick to classical. We're going to stick to jazz. None of that new stuff, ladies and gentlemen. TJ is going to go ahead and use his Danger Sunoco. And now I have to select between those cards. Trying to hit the Sunoco yet again. We are going to hit the Sunoco. We are so clutch. 
Unfortunately for me, he's going to be able to smudge some of the Sunoco no matter what to his side of the field. But no drawing for you. No getting those Thunder Dragon monsters. And now he's going to activate that Danger Nessie. Whoa. Now he has multiple Danger monsters in his hand. So uh, hitting Nessie doesn't necessarily change anything. Uh, I kind of want Nessie to the side of the field. We're going to hit Thunder Dragon. Sweet. So he's going to be summoning that th a Danger Nessie to his side of the field. And then drawing a card because, you know, that's how Danger Nessie works. So he's played through my two negates. Fortunately for me, uh, he can't use monster effects uh, on the field that are special summoned. But also unfortunately for me, he hasn't used a monster effect that was special summoned right now. So I am not in all state right now. I'm in bad hands. He's going to use all three of those monsters for a link summon. Huh? That That's interesting. What? Maybe. No, he can't make Nightmare. Well, he can make Nightmare Unicorn, but that won't do anything. No, he's thinking about it. He's like, nah, I can't, I can't even use all three. So let me just place them all back to my side of the field. Definitely got to think about what I'm going to do for this next play. So uh, just to give you guys fair warning, there is a couple of things that I want to point out. First of all, uh, we have some te technical difficulties. So we had to take a break for a little bit. Uh, and during that time, CJ was trying to telegraph his plays. And he left Saryuja Skulldred in his graveyard. I, I don't know why he left the Saryuja Skulldred in his graveyard. But hey, sometimes that things happen. But we did take a little slight break. And that's how the So You Just Go Dread wound it up there. He's trying to figure out how can he break this board. And the smartest way to do it now that he has that Reproticus and two additional monsters on his side of the field is to make that Nightmare Cerberus. He makes that Nightmare Cerberus pointing under the Reproticus. It can now activate its effect. He can then destroy the Cyber Dragon Infinity. You do not want to destroy the Griffin in this particular sequence. Um, because uh, obviously if you destroy the griffin, you need to have another way to destroy the infinity. That monster can be pretty strong when attacking it through seekers. So either you have another way to destroy both of these monsters or you destroy the cyber dragon infinity and then you attack into the nightmare griffin. And now you're in a pretty good, which actually, now that you look at the life point differential, I'm assuming that's what he was thinking. That's what he was testing. That's what he was telegraphing before we had to get back right into this game. So he's going to use both of those monsters for a link summon. And that Link Summon monster is going to be the Nightmare Cerberus. Cerberus is co-linked. Uh, it's actually linked. That's the only thing that needs to happen for you to be able to activate its effects. But since it is co-linked, you'll be able to discard the Battery Man Solar to destroy a monster on the field um, and draw a card. Uh, he's going to go ahead and use the effect of his Eclipse Wyvern as well, or his White Dragon Wyvern Buster as well, to allow him to add a Black Dragon from his deck to his hand. So he's uh, doing pretty well. He's, he's doing pretty good. He's going to destroy the Nightmare Griffin. So uh, that's, he, he must have another way for Cyber Dragon Infinity uh, uh, to get off the board by destruction. Again, you don't want to attack into that card just because of Cyber Dragon Psych. He's going to special summon Black Dragon Callop Surf into his side of the field. And now he can either, he can actually go into uh, his Summon Sorceress, which he is going to do. Using both the Nightmare Cerberus and the Reproticus. Cerberus is a Link 1 and Reproticus is a Link 2. And, uh, or he could have just go into Unicorn. He can go into Unicorn and then get rid of the Cyber Dragon uh, Infinity. But no, he's going to make the Summon Sorceress. Summon Sorceress targeting Black Dragon. Black Dragon is going to go ahead and special summon Eclipse Wyvern to his side of the field. Maybe he has a Leviathan in his hand because if he does, he can pop up with some pretty good plays using both all three of those monsters for a Link Summon. Huh. He's, now he's going to make the Nightmare Unicorn because Summon Sorceress can either be one or three. There's no way he can make four with those three monsters. So he's deciding on what he's going to make. Uh, hasn't necessarily committed to a Link monster. He's going to put that Black Dragon Cattle Serpent back to his side of the field. And then summons Ayuja Skull Dread. Now Eclipse Wyvern's effect is going to activate. With that, he's going to banish that uh, Chaos Dragon Leviathan. And if he does have a Leviathan, he can banish three Light Monsters. Uh, yes, yeah, special summon a Thunder Dragon Monster, or Battery Man Solar to his side of the field. Use Solar's effect to send another Dragon Monster to his graveyard. Um, use the Wyvern... Oh, it looks like he's just going to go straight to his battle phase. This is weird. And I didn't use the effect of Cyber. Or I'm going to use Seeger right now. Am I? Please tell me I'm going to use Seeger. This is probably the big oof. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Cali effect made a big oof. I didn't punish TJ for his bad play. He's just going to attack with the Cyber Dragon or with the Saryuja. And it doesn't look like I'm going to do anything about it. I'm just going to put the Cyber Dragon Infinity into my graveyard. What was I thinking? Cyber Dragon, Cyber Dragon Tiger doesn't have to be co-linked or anything. It doesn't have to link to the Cyber Dragon to give the monster attack, or at least maybe it does. No, 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 no. It, de it definitely doesn't work like that. But man, Cali Effect, when you definitely don't think, you definitely don't think. That should have been something 
that you've taken advantage of. But still, again, uh, if you guys look at it in, in hindsight, uh, TJ should have just destroyed the Cyber Dragon anyways and then attacked over the Nightmare Griffin, which he was already planning to do. So if you ask me, no harm, no foul. This card's name becomes Cyber Dragon. Uh, during the battle phase, if this card did not declare an attack, you can target one sheen monster you control with 2100 or more attack. That monster gains 2100 attack and defense. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I definitely could have saved it, but I'm going to go ahead and normal summon Cyber Dragon Core and add Cyber Dragon Rev System. Uh, TJ wasn't able to put a Thunder Monster on his side of the field, so he wouldn't be able to make Thunder Dragon Colossus, so I'm in good hands right now. I'm going to be able to do some plays. I'm going to then activate my Cyber Repair Plant. That's gonna get me a light machine monster from my deck to my hand. I'm assuming I don't need the help of my Kaiju monster. I'm just gonna go ahead and need a free search. And then since I can activate both effects in sequence, I have multiple light monsters in my graveyard. I can put a cyber dragon uh, monster back into my deck, which I wanna say I wanna take full advantage of. I'm not that bad. I'm not gonna be making all types of mistakes. Just, just, just the important ones, ladies and gentlemen. So yes, it looks like I'm adding, no, that's not what you guys think it is. It's a proxy for Cyber Dragon Nashter. I know, again, I'm going to add that monster from my deck to my hand. I, I might be popping up with some combos just to make up for the Cyber Dragon Infinity that's in the graveyard. So yes, it looks like I'm going to return Cyber Dragon into my deck. And uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty good. I might have some other plays up my sleeve. And I might be able to end this game right here, right now, depending on my sequence. And yes, we have the machine duplication. We're going to be able to spell summon that Cyber Dragon back to my side of the field, as well as another Cyber Dragon to my side of the field. So yes, we are able to make an even bigger board, possibly even a better board, using both Cyber Dragon monsters for an Exceed Summon. We're going to go ahead and make Cyber Dragon Nova, or we can make the Constellar Plytes. Never leave the Constellar Plytes out. So Cyber Dragon Nova can detach a material to spell summon a Cyber Dragon monster to our side of the field. Now we can make that Cyber Dragon Infinity. Cyber Dragon Infinity can go ahead and take a monster. We're probably going to take that Soyuja Skull Dread. Yes, yeah, so we're going to attack the Soyuja Skull Dread as material for the Cyber Dragon. And then Cyber Dragon is, it, we're in a good spot. TJ still has 75 or he should have 7,700 life points. I'm not, he should have whatever she should have. He should have a decent amount of life points right now. And um, yeah, I, I think that I, I might not be able to win right now without the help of other cards, but I can definitely put some pretty big damage on the board. Oh wait, no, we still have that Cyber Dragon Nashter in our hand. If we are able to resolve Cyber Dragon Nashter, then we probably can win the game right here, right now. Checking them out with Graveyard. Trying to figure out what I can do. I'm going to use both Cyber Dragon and Core for a Link Summon. Not into a Seeger. We're actually going to go ahead and Link Summon into our Cleefort Genius. Now, Cleefort Genius is just going to be an additional body on our side of the field. We don't necessarily use it for anything else at this particular moment, but the negation effect is nice. Using the Cyber Dragon Nashter to pitch the Cyber Dragon Vi to Summon itself. We're then going to go ahead and be able to spell summon a monster with 2,100 attack or 2,100 defense towards that ability, which is Cyber Dragon Infinity. Cyber Dragon Infinity to absorb the, uh, the Thunder Dragon Colossus. This is game. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you didn't, let us know what we could do to be better. Also, be sure if you guys are editors or know anything about the editing process to contact me for improvement on this series. Please like, comment, subscribe. Most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day. Like I.